Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this is a topic that I've been getting some requests on. People have been uh, asking to see, a, to see a video about this. Um, so this is a video about how to use Euler's method um, to solve ODEs and uh, how to implement it in Python. Also just um, <laughs> quick public service announcement. Yes, this guy's name is pronounced as Euler. Uh, don't be like me when I was a freshman in college pronouncing it like Euler because that that will not be correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't don't be like me when I was uh, in college. Um, it's pronounced Euler, so I, I eventually figured that out. Um, but yeah, so basically this is this is a numerical method for solving ODEs, um, and it's basically kind of the simplest uh, the simplest method that is really not complicated. It's kind of it's almost like a brute force approach to um, numerical ODE solving. Um, okay, so before we actually get to the solver, I'm just going to show you guys like the, the actual system I'm going to be using for an example. So um, if, if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know that like most of my other videos are about um, computational biology. So this is going to be an example from computational biology, but um, you can use this method, of course, for, uh, for any, any kind of ODE modeling. Um, so even if you're not a biologist, I hope you'll still find this... Uh, so find this video helpful. But yeah, so let's just say that we're we're modeling um, the concentration of a type of RNA uh, in 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 a cell. So we have this uh, messenger RNA. Um, it's being produced from from the gene in the DNA. It gets produced through through the uh, transcription of this gene. Uh, I'm going to call the um, concentration of the RNA uh, M for mRNA. Um, it's produced with a rate K and then, um, it breaks down or degrades, um, with some rate gamma. Um, okay. So you guys follow me so far? So it's basically, um, very simple model. We only have one variable that we're tracking, which is M, the, uh, concentration of this, um, of this type of mRNA and I'm saying concentration rather than count because uh, since, we're, since we're using an ODE model it's going to be like a continuous variable so it kind of makes more sense I think in terms of um, concentration which is continuous rather than like the discrete counts of the uh, actual number of uh, RNA transcripts um, but okay yeah so it's uh, produced it's produced with a rate K and then it breaks down or degrades um, with the rate gamma and then um, I'm just calling the variable n. Um, okay, so let's look at the actual um, differential equation for this. So it's going to be d m d t equals k minus gamma m. So um, hopefully you guys are following this at this point. We just have our production term here. It's produced with the rate k. And then it um, it degrades with the rate gamma, and gamma is being multiplied by m here because because the the decay um, the, the decay depends on the level of m. Like if we don't have any m, then there can't be any decay of m happening. Um, okay, so very simple model. Um, hopefully you guys are following at this point. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to make a very simple change to the notation. So I'm basically going to write the same thing, but just change the notation a bit. Um, instead of saying dm dt, I'm just going to say delta m delta t. Um, so the reason I'm doing that, basically almost just writing the same thing here, but the reason I'm saying now um, delta m over delta t rather than dm dt is um, the idea is to um, kind of like do a simulation, like update the simulation in discrete time steps. So basically we're gonna have, um, the results are basically gonna look like this. We're gonna have like our, uh, our time points and then our levels of M. And we're going to um, like go through uh, some some time intervals, I'll call the time intervals like delta t here, so it could be like 0, 0 0.5, 1, and so on and so on. We're going to um, like incrementally go through the simulation uh, with these delta t size time steps, 
And then at each one of these time steps, we're going to update uh, M accordingly. Yeah, so this is the idea for the uh, numerical OD solution is kind of just going through step by step. And at each incremental step, we just want to update um, with the appropriate level of M at that step. Um, okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to do this from what I've written down here. So at this point, um, I'm just going to do a very simple rearrange of the model. I'm just going to bring delta t over here, and I'm going to say delta m equals k minus gamma m, all of that multiplied by delta t, right? So basically all this is saying is that for some, for some incremental um, time step delta t, this is how we calculate the um, change that's happening to m. So from there, all we need to do to uh, numerically solve the OD in Python is we just, we, just, um, we just write the model like this, basically. So we're going to say uh, m at the um, next iteration, I'll call that m at i plus 1 equals m at i, um, the current iteration, plus delta m, right? So I'm just using i here to mean uh, the, the number of the iteration. So it's like the, uh, the uh, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration. We're just going through um, iteratively, and then each time uh, updating, updating m accordingly. And we can calculate delta m, like we said, just right here. And then we do the same thing for t. So t at the iteration i plus 1. So t at the next iteration um, is going to be t at i, uh, remember t at the current iteration, plus delta t. And in the uh, actual Python code, delta t is going to be something that we define. So we can make it whatever we want. I made it 0. Uh, 0 0.5 here. We can make it uh, whatever we want. K and gamma are going to be constant parameters that we define. And then um, the only thing we're going to have to be really calculating is going to be M. So basically we're going to have some starting value for M and then we're going to go through and then um, just, just for each iteration calculate delta M and then update, um, update the next iteration with the value that we calculate for uh, for M for the next step. Um, okay, I hope you guys are following me at this point. Um, let's now uh, get into the actual Python code. Um, okay guys, so I think you're actually gonna be like pretty um, like pleasantly surprised how easy this is to, uh, to actually write the code for. So it's only gonna be really a couple lines of code. It's gonna be actually like really, really easy. So um, basically just start by importing matplotlib.pyplot as uh, PLT, just cause we're gonna, be, uh, we're gonna wanna plot the results once we have them. Um, but yeah, so, uh, let's just start, let's just define our initial condition, how many of the, uh, how, how many, um, RNAs we're starting with. So I'm just going to make, um, a variable, a variable called m init equals zero. So that just means we're going to start with zero for our, uh, level of our variable m. Um, let's define a t end. This is just how long we want the, uh, simulation to go for. I'll make the t end, um, uh, 200 for now. Um, and then, yeah, we need our, we need our parameters. So we have two parameters, uh, K, the production rate, uh, for now, I'll just make this 0 0.2, um, make this 0 0.2, um, and then gamma, uh, the uh, degradation rate, make this, um, 0 0.05. Um, okay, so now to keep track of the level of the variable m as well as the uh, as well as the time points, we're going to need uh, two lists. So I'm just going to make a list called capital M. Um, make it make a list, and then uh, the the first element in it is going to be um, m init, our initial condition we just made. And then basically the way the simulation is going to work is we're going to be um, appending to this list with the new variables that I, yeah, the new like variable levels that we calculate. So this might look something like, um, something like this. We're basically just going to um, 
go through the iterations of the simulation and append the new values of m that we calculate to this list. And then basically we're going to do the same thing for t. So t is going to start at zero, but we're going to be appending um, appending the new time points in these delta t sized uh, increments. So it's going to end up looking something like that. But yeah, we just started off at um, zero. And then we need to um, actually define our delta t. So I'm just going to make delta t um, 0 0.5. But you guys can make it uh, whatever you want. Maybe play around with some different values, see if the result uh, changes. Um, hopefully it shouldn't change too much. But um, but yeah, you guys can, can make it whatever you want. Okay, so, so basically the way we're going to actually like iterate through the simulations is we're going to put all this in a while loop. So we're going to say while the most recent time point, and I'm just writing that as um, t index negative one. That just means our last element in this t list, um, which means our most recent value for t, our most recent time point. If this is less than um, t end, then we're going to uh, continue on with the simulation, like keep, keep iterating through it. As long as our last time point is less than t end, we're going to keep um, keep continuing on with uh, the iterations. Um, okay, so then we're going to say um, we're going to say next m, which is going to be m at the next uh, the next step. It's going to be um, m at the current step. M, which is m uh, index negative one, which is our most recent value of m. Um, it's going to be m at the current step plus um, our actual equation that we wrote on the board, which is k minus gamma times m. I'm just kind of saying that, um, kind of saying that from memory now. But but yeah, that's just what we wrote on the board. That's the actual um, equation for the ODE, uh, k minus gamma times m. All of that times delta t. Remember, this is what we wrote on the board. This is this is just going to be what we wrote on the board. On the board, we said this this was like the m at i plus one equals the m at index i plus all of this is the delta m. Remember, we we saw for this on the board. We said delta m equals k minus gamma times m. All of that times delta t. Um, so this is the uh, delta m that we that we wrote down on the board, and then we said m at the next uh, the the next time point is going to be m at the current time point plus delta m. So basically, that's just uh, that's just that's just all that we wrote on the board basically. And then we're just going to say m the list um, dot append next m right. So remember, it's just just a um, just to say it again, this is m uh, at i plus 1, m at the next time step, and this is equal to m at the current time step, which you wrote on the board is m at iteration i plus all of this is the delta m that we solved for. Um, okay, then we append that to our m list, and then we're just going to do the same thing basically for... Um, for t, uh, writing it a bit more complicated than I have to, I'm just going to write next t equals uh, the current level of t plus delta t. And then um, t the list dot append next t. And um, yeah, this is it. This is really... Uh, this is really all you have to do. I even wrote it more complicated than it really has to be. You guys could have just, you could have just put this whole thing in uh, the append. You guys could have, this, this could have been two lines instead of four if you wanted to write it, you know, as, as simply as possible. But I kind of wrote it like this to like make it clear to you guys what's actually going on. We're calculating M and T at the next time step um, based on their, their current values at the current time step plus the deltas uh, for, for delta M and delta T. So I wrote it like more complicated than it has to be just to show you guys. But yeah, um, super simple, uh, super simple. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of code to, to write this. Um, okay, so next let's actually like plot the output of this. I'm gonna be a little bit lazy here and just copy and paste in the code. But yeah, basically just plotting um, 
plotting our list M as a function of our list T. So basically plotting just our, our random variable M as a function of time, basically. Um, okay. Oh, um, sorry about that, guys. My bad. So, so this is, I forgot to say, this should be M, um, M index, uh, negative one, because we want our current value of M, not, not just M, the, uh, the list. Sorry about that, guys. Missed that. So yeah, this should be M index negative one for our uh, current value of M. Um, yeah, looks like what it should look like, I think, right? Um, so we're getting a steady state of four here. Uh, if you guys remember how to calculate steady states, the steady state for this for this system is just k divided by gamma. So yeah, it should be four, and uh, we're getting four. Um, show you guys that if we if we want to start with like something higher than four, it would still go down to four. So we could start it at ten, and show that um, it'll still it'll still go to the steady state. In this case, it goes down from ten down to four. Um, but yeah, it looks like our, uh, our little software that we wrote is, um, working okay. So now just to, just to prove to ourselves that we're actually getting this right, I'm just going to, um, copy and paste some code in to, to plot basically the same thing, just using, um, Python's built-in ODE solver, or I mean, not, not built-in, but like the, the SciPy solver. So, um... Yeah, I'm just going to import uh, NumPy and then scipy.integrate. And then this is just like a sanity check just to make sure that we're actually getting the right answer. So basically, I'm just plotting our result using the uh, Euler method that we wrote ourselves from scratch. I'm going to plot that at the same time as plotting the actual output from uh, Python's ODE int, like the actual like legit Python ODE solver. Um, and just just to prove to ourselves that we actually um, got it right and we're getting the same result that like the real solver actually got. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's a bit hard to see here, but the reason it's hard to see is because our line is like so close to the actual um, like SciPy OD in line, but you can see, yeah, the SciPy uh, OD int solution is this dashed line here, and then our solution is the blue line here, and it looks like pretty much pretty much the same line, uh, really. Um, but yeah, this is a good just check to make sure that we uh, that we actually got it right. Um, okay, guys, so that's basically all I have for this video. Um, if anyone has any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And as usual, the code will be on GitHub if you want to download it. Yeah, if people are interested in this topic, I may make some more videos. I, I might make some more videos about like different numerical methods, different kinds of, uh, different kinds of like ODE solvers that you can write from scratch in Python. Maybe some more, uh, Euler examples with maybe like two variables or, uh, or just, or more, uh, like multivariable problems. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll hopefully make some of those in the, in the future. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and see you next time.